Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to our healing liturgy for this day and this week. We are a YouTube premiere and we are shared onto Facebook. Please do take a moment to post a greeting, share a comment, let us know that you are here and praying with us. You may post those on the YouTube comments or on the Facebook comments. And as you participate in this week's healing liturgy online with us, I encourage you and invite you to add persons to our prayer lists for healing and for repose, either by posting their names and the intention of which prayers are desired into the comments, or by emailing me. Father Timothy A at gmail.com. F A T H E R T I M O T H Y A at gmail.com. And I will make sure that that email is also in the comments so that you can see it as well. And in a moment, you will also see it on the screen. Thank you for praying with us. Now, friends, let us begin our prayers. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, who from the family of thy servant David didst raise up Joseph to be the guardian of thy incarnate son and the spouse of his virgin mother. Give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to thy commands. Through the same thy son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from Second Samuel. The word of the Lord came to Nathan. Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David. Thus says the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Our psalm is a portion of Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 26 through 29. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of heaven. A reading from Paul's epistle to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this week's healing liturgy, we commemorate St. Joseph, guardian of our Lord. His feast day is this Saturday, the 19th of March. There is a joke about Mary and Christians. A joke that says that there was a good Protestant who arrived at the pearly gates and Jesus met this good Protestant at the pearly gates and said to this gentleman, I know you've met my father, but I don't know that you've ever met my mother and introduced the good Protestant to Mary. If Mary is unknown, I think we could say Joseph is even more so. Joseph's place in the gospel is significant but small. Joseph is only mentioned in the, the first two chapters of Matthew and the second chapter of Luke in any significant way. In Matthew, Joseph is encountered by the archangel Gabriel who tells him what the child born of Mary shall be named. And then Joseph accompanies Mary to Bethlehem, where Jesus shall be born. And Joseph leads Mary and Jesus to Egypt to escape the wrath of Herod. And Joseph brings Jesus and Mary back from Egypt and to Nazareth. And then Matthew says nothing further at all about Joseph. Luke chapter 2, that's the only place significantly that Joseph appears there. For similar reasons as Matthew, but not identical. Like Matthew, Joseph leads Mary to Bethlehem that Jesus might be born there. Joseph and Mary together present Jesus in the temple on the eighth day to be circumcised and named in the temple. And then again, they present Jesus in the temple on the 40th day. And then They find Jesus at 12 years old in the temple. And then there is no more mention of Joseph, of significance, that is. Other than those portions of Matthew and Luke that we just described, there are only passing mentions of Joseph, Luke. Chapter 3, verse 23, Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his work. He was the son, as was thought, of Joseph, son of Heli. 
and John, chapter 1, verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And then John chapter 6, verse 42. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? That's it. No other mention. By the way, did you notice? We didn't mention Mark at all. Because Mark doesn't mention Joseph. Even once. Even in passing. What do we know about Joseph? We know that he was a good and righteous man, um, an honorable man. We know that he was a carpenter. He passed his trade on to Jesus. We know that he was a descendant of David. And it is through Joseph that Jesus is called the son of David. But we know precious little more than that. We assume that he was much older than Mary, and that is why we don't have anything more, that somewhere between 12 years old Jesus and 30-year-old Jesus Joseph has died. But there's something wonderful for us to consider. Righteous and faithful Joseph doesn't need to be in the spotlight. His faithfulness speaks enough. His righteousness does not proclaim him with the faithfulness of God. How refreshing that is. And in these Lenten days, would that it would not only be refreshing, but what if we were so to live in a way that we would emulate this? In the, in the grand scheme of things, after all, friends, will any of us in the pages of history be mentioned even as much as Joseph? Probably not. But what can we be mentioned for? Our faithfulness to God. Our faithfulness, in which the narrative does not need to be about us, but simply about God, who is always faithful. In our own day and generation, in our lives, in every place and time. Thanks be to God for just. Thanks be to God. For righteousness from God. And the faithfulness of God. Even when we are not. 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, friends, we offer the litany for healing. Remember that you are invited to add persons to the list of names that I will read in a moment who are in need of healing for any reason. Healing is not just something for the body. It is for the whole person. And though we will not name the names of the newly departed certainly know that, as always, we hold them in our prayers. And if there are persons you wish to add to that, you may certainly do so. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Addie, Adelaide, Antoinette, Betsy. Bob, Bruce, Brooke, Carol, Carrie, Charlotte, Kai, Clara, Connie, Dave, David, Don, Donna, Earl O, Earl W, Ed, Eric, Finnegan, Lawrence, Francis, Fred A, Fred C, Grace, Greg, Heather, James K, James N, Jean, Jim B, Jim F, Jim G, Joan, Joanne K, Joanne R, Joe D, Joe S, Joey A, Joey Y, John B, John F, John H, John M, Father John W, Judy, Karen, Lorelai, Lena, Leonard, Linda, Lindsay, Lisa, Lou, Marge, Marie, Mary B, Pastor Mary O, Marianne, Neil, Nikki, Father Nelson, Oliver, Pat, Paul, Pauline, Priscilla, Ricky, Robert K, Robert M, Bishop Rodney, Ron, Rose A, Rose G, Shane, Sue, Suzanne, Tia, and Trish. God the Father, thy will for all people is health and salvation. We praise thee and thank thee, O Lord. God the Son, who came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly, we praise thee and thank thee, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, who maketh our bodies the temple of thy presence. We praise thee and thank thee, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in thee we live and move and have our being. We praise thee and thank thee, O Lord. Lord, grant thy healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek thy guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of thy will and an awareness of thy presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress, the soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and the holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of thy Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. 
Thou art the Lord who does wonders. Thou hast declared thy power among the peoples. With thee, O Lord, is the well of life. And in thy light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send thy blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who liveth and reigneth forever and ever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me. All ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. May our loving God give us and all for whom we have prayed this day the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. May God relieve all suffering and restore us and those for whom we have prayed in body, mind, and spirit. May all of us in the frailty of our flesh know God's healing power. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, for thy goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands hath made. It shall become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, for thy goodness we have this wine to offer, through the vine and work of creation. It shall become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
friends, as we pray the Eucharistic prayer, the thanksgiving of the church, we remember still those for whom we have prayed for their healing and also those for whom we have prayed for their repose. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who does bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of himself one suffered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, to celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks, for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech the merciful Father to hear us and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body, and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. 
humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through a manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, a merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving. And now, friends, we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love thee above all things and long for thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou hast already come, I embrace thee and unite myself entirely to thee. Never permit me to be separated from thee. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this thy family, Lord, with thy never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of thy heavenly grace, they may be upheld by thy divine protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, friends, for joining us for this week's Healing Liturgy online in these Lenten days. I invite you in these Lenten days to dive deeply into our prayers. There are a number of opportunities to pray throughout Lent. The healing liturgy will be offered like this Mondays at noon. We pray every evening, daily evening prayers, Sunday through Friday evenings at 6.30. We pray morning prayer daily, Monday through Saturday at 8.30 in the morning. Every Sabbath day, every Saturday, we pray noonday prayer with the first readings of the Sunday readings that we will hear the following morning. Saturday evenings during these Lenten days at 7.30 p.m. We pray brief evening prayers and hear the Sunday homily. And Sunday mornings in these Lenten days, for our weekly online liturgy, we pray morning prayer with prayer for a spiritual communion and the great litany. Keep in mind also that between the two parishes, Mass is offered three times every Sunday in person, 8 o'clock and 10.30 at St. Stephen's and 9 o'clock at Holy Cross. Keep in mind also that in these Lenten days, the Wilkesbury Downtown Ministerium is offering an ecumenical Lenten service at noon on Wednesdays at St. Stephen's. And our very own Ken and Mark Lava has put together, as is normal, a list of organists who will provide a half hour organ recital before that noon service. Lent is intended, friends, to be a springtime for our souls, a springtime for the, our faith. It is a time for us to grow. And may we grow well. A blessed Lent to you all, dear friends. And know of my love and my prayers for you all. And my thanks for you and your prayers.